field to our Muslims as we've got Christians as our guests here. Let's also afford them the opportunity to engage in question speakers as our guests tonight. Thank you. <laughs> This is for James first. Um, for the last 25, 30 years, I've been struggling to understand one thing that the Bible says. God is a jealous God. I just take, I want to elaborate a little bit better than me. I understand God, you have mentioned um, what the nature, the nature of God as we were told in different occasions, is kindness, compassion, generosity, forgiveness. I have to ask the question. Yes, please. Therefore, when you say nature, God's nature is not reflective on those lines because you mentioned that God is a jealous God. If God is a jealous God, how can I attribute these qualities or the other way around? If God is, uh, is nothing but okay. a manifestation okay. of I think, I think that is point point. How do you explain that point point. God is a jealous God? Okay. Good point. This is it. Thank you very much. All right. I, I think I understand the question. and Something tells me that Shabir and I are probably not going to actually disagree on this. Um, when God says he's a jealous God, he's speaking in the context of worship. And he is demanding uh, that his people worship him and him alone, and that they not engage in idolatry or what you all would identify as shirk. And so in a sense, he's a jealous God. He's jealous of his having his people's worship, his people's love. Uh, that's not contradictory in any way, shape, or form to God being kind, gracious, merciful. Uh, it seems like some people want to sort of shrink God down and make him uh, much more like us. But the reality is, we have to look at all that the Bible says about God and accept it. And you all, I don't know why that would be an issue for you. Because if I were to take one of the 99 names, I could take it in an imbalanced way and make it contradictory to some of the other of the 99 names. But I'm not going to do that. And you don't do that. So don't, don't do that with, with God of the Old Testament either. Recognize that God can be absolutely jealous of the worship of his people, and yet still be, he, he proved himself to be incredibly merciful and gracious to them. Uh, the, the, the term is chesed, loving kindness. Uh, that's the term used in, in uh, the Psalter, where over and over it says, the, the loving kindness of the Lord is everlasting. So these are all true statements, and our role is to allow for all of those things to be true, not to just make one true and contradiction for uh, something else. Thank you. Could be I think, uh, yeah, we don't want to agree, disagree on, on the idea of God being jealous, but uh, what rises out of this game that you need to address is uh, how do Christians maintain that Old Testament uh, focus on the one jealous God who does not want to share his divinity with anyone else? Uh, it, it, it is very clear that the one who spoke to Moses said to him, I am Yahweh, uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. Now, uh, that one that is said, said to be Yahweh, you're saying his Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, if Father, Son, and Holy Ghost sends Jesus, then Jesus is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He's, he's neither Father, nor Son, nor Holy Ghost. You have to explain this. It is obvious that the New Testament writers, Paul in particular, and John, whom you're citing, uh, are, are writers who have uh, exaggerated the position of Jesus. They have raised him between man and God. They have made him into the creator of the world. And uh, as such, even though they believe that Jesus is not God, this is clear in Paul's writings and in John's writings, and still, they have elevated him beyond a human being, and so they have confused the matter of the worship of one jealous God. So how do you, as a Christian, maintain that they want himself to say? Well, when you, when, you, when you assume, Shabir, that you can simply put every author in contradiction to himself without allowing for any harmonious interpretation of them, which is what you do not do with the Quran, you're operating on a double, double standard, and I, and I can't deal with a double standard. You just said that, that, that Paul and John make Jesus the creator of the universe, but not really, but they also say he's not God. That's not true. Uh, the consistent interpretation of Paul, John, Matthew, and Mark, as I'll demonstrate tomorrow evening, is that they recognize that Jesus is the God-man, they recognize he was a prophet, priest, king, but that also that he was the incarnate one. That's the only consistent way. What you have to do is you have to take this verse and say, well, I'm going to throw that out. I'm going to throw this one out. I'm going to throw that one out. 
that's not interpretation. That's taking your conclusions and pressing them on the text. The fact of the matter is, the, when you say, well, Yahweh sent Jesus, the being doesn't send, send anybody, the persons do. And so when Yahweh is used of each of the persons, you're assuming Unitarianism and just automatically saying Trinitarianism can't even be true. I won't even allow the data to enter into my argument. That's not the way to do it. Thank you.